sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Also featured on the Roar on 99.1, 93.5, and 94.7 HD2. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Never better. I Tigers love that won for again. Us. I know. Four straight. I was taking my dog for a walk and I got the notification. I don't even watch anymore. I won't lie. But I got the notification that they won and I was like, woo! I told you guys before the season, they're going to win games. You're just going to be like, okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, they won. 3 2. Good game against the Rays. Good pitching. I. This is how the Tigers are supposed to win baseball games. Fundamental defense. <laughs> a nice home run from Scope. Uh, again, uh, this is what they need. The bats are still a big concern, though. As much as I'd like to wake up this morning and say, a four-game win streak. Hey, guys, things are changing. Things are getting better. They can't swing the bats. They just can't. And that is going to be a problem, but... As you can see, pitching can keep you in games. Did you have softball yesterday? No. Oh. Why? I was just wondering about so how your ready. bats were going this year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> good morning, man. <laughs> Guys, we got a jam-packed show this morning. We got a lot to talk about. Brad Holmes discusses with Rich Eisen, whether or not Jared Goff is the guy. He's he's given a lot of clues and hints, and I think I have come up with a theory on exactly what Brad Holmes thinks of Jared Goff. And we'll get to that at around 8.45-ish. The phone lines are open at around 8.10, 8.12. You can start calling in. I am taking any and all calls related to the Detroit Lions schedule. What you think of the expectations they have this year. And, of course, Jared Goff, is he the guy? I definitely want to hear a lot of fan opinions today. So everybody in the chat, everybody listening at home, call in 313-552-6322. We're going to take a ton of calls. Obviously, the lottery is tonight. I'll share my opinions later on. We have Sean Murphy joining the show at 916. Corey Woods at 830. So we got a lot to discuss, but I already brought it up. Tigers won again. Another solid pitching outing. Another decent bullpen performance. Another below average hitting performance outside of a two run dinger. You win 3 2, you take it. Look, you take it. And you can't start the season 9 and 23. <laughs> like, it's just that simple. And yeah, again, I can be. Uh, very encouraged, very uh, very happy with a four-game win streak, sweeping the Orioles, coming out on the road, on a difficult road trip, and beating Tampa Bay. Very good. All very good signs. These are things you want to see. But they can't hit the baseball, Maddie. They just can't. And to all of you at home, it's this simple. They can pitch well. And they can have a goddamn, I don't know, top five, top ten bullpen. They'll still start the season 9-23 and 23 like they did. And you can win four games in an instance throughout an entire season. But if you can't swing the bats, you are going to have a problem. Yes, you can rely on pitching every now and then to bail you out if you're having a bad night, a bad series. That's, like, that's acceptable. But you can't just be 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Two, three, two, four, five, zero, two. You cannot score these amount of runs and expect to win baseball games consistently. And at this point, who, who are the what? Are, where are the bats? Where are the runs coming from? You know, before the year, it was a lot easier to look at everything, and uh, maybe I was very optimistic. And shame on me, I'm going to smack myself probably after the show, but. You know, A.J. Hinch really did a hell of a job with this team last year. And for them to improve the way they did in the offseason, 
Now, was it the ideal offseason? Was it the amount of players you wanted? Maybe not. But it was still enough, given how talented the manager is, that you would expect they would be a lot better. And they haven't been. They haven't been. They need to win. Again, the Orioles, a team I believe they should sweep. Not that the Tigers are any better currently, but let's be honest, the Tigers should beat the team like, an Oriole, like the Orioles. Tampa Bay Rays, hey, it's a good start. Good pitching performance. But I'll tell you what. I can, Bold prediction here. You ready for this, Maddie? This is, this is some next-level stuff. Clip it. I expect the Tampa <laughs> Bay Rays to score more than two runs tonight. And the Tigers are going to have to score more than that. They're going to have to score more than three to win tonight. Again, the pitching's nice. Very happy with it. Good bullpen. Good closing. All right, great. Good fielding. Score some runs. You have to score runs. That's the name of the game. The pitching's nice. Again, it's better than I think a lot of people expected going into the year. The bats have been so disappointing. Um, Drew Brees, by the way. Did you hear the news? I did. Will not return NBC? I did. He's a Detroit Lion. <laughs> oh, God. Will Drew Brees. I, I can't believe. I'm, I have to entertain this this morning. I'm sorry. When I read this headline, I was, I was very uh, intrigued by it. So, <laughs> apparently, Drew Brees, the rumor is, um, is considering a return of football. And there are people that believe he should not only consider a return of football, but a return <laughs> not only to football, but with the Detroit Lions and Dan Campbell. That doesn't surprise me. And uh, Why every time somebody's available or potentially coming back, does everybody think they're coming to the Lions? <laughs> the hell if I know at this point. <laughs> I Again, I, I really think the quarterback talk all offseason was immature. Um, for someone who was very critical of golf all year during the season, even I had to come to his defense, which was a bit odd, especially for somebody like me that I typically don't come out and give my uh, my support to somebody that, let's be honest, didn't look good for a majority of the season. But if you're a fair and honest human being, you would understand that after Anthony Lynn was removed from his duties, that this young man, who's only 26, 27 years old, yeah. looked a lot better in a Detroit Lions uniform. Now, is that franchise altering? No, it's not. But Drew Brees? <laughs> what, are you, what are you guys doing to me this morning? Drew Brees? Okay, one, no, right? There's a thing called the salary cap. There's a thing called, I believe he still has a contract with the Saints. Number one. Number two, no. And number three, hell no. What are we doing? Detroit, come on. I get it. I get it. You don't like Jared Goff. You don't need to like Jared Goff. You think Philadelphia Eagles fans like Nick Foles? <laughs> when they won the Super Bowl, they did. And even then, they were like, yep, time to get rid of him. Carson Wentz. <laughs> like, guys, at the end of the day, I know Jared Goff isn't the sexiest quarterback in the NFL. I understand. I understand he's not going to go out and throw for 4,800 yards, 40 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, MVP cat. I get it. But didn't you know that Brad Holmes was holding out for Drew Brees? <laughs> God, Drew Brees. None of it makes sense. I'm just like throwing my papers up. I'm reading it last night. I'm like, guys, we're better than this. <laughs> we're better than this. We are. I, I don't get it. Are the Detroit Lions championship contenders? Yes or no, right now, for this uh, upcoming season? No. No. <laughs> no. Unless they have some secret formula or three or four or five players that are going to be all pro this year that nobody knows about. They are not contending for the Super Bowl. Okay, what? so why the hell would Drew Brees come back to football to play for Dan Campbell? Because Dan Campbell's a nice guy? I don't know. Maybe he's trying to find his hairline back. Did Drew Brees lose his hairline? I, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> it starts, like, back here. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty bad. Oh, <laughs> you guys are mean. I get it from you. Oh, God. You've been rubbing Sports off Sports Illustrated me. killing me with these uh, hypothetical articles. Again, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't help. But, again, the, the more important story this morning is that the Tigers have won four games. I gave you my two, three minutes of the Drew Brees saga, which I think is very stupid. 
So I will no longer acknowledge it for the rest of the day. Nor will I acknowledge any other quarterback coming to the Detroit Lions. If Brad Holmes wanted a quarterback in, in place of Jared Goff, he would have already made the move for it. If Brad Holmes didn't believe in Jared Goff for the upcoming season, hell, even the foreseeable future in the second season, dare I say two three years down the line, he would have drafted a quarterback. Oh, wait. <laughs> the highest one went at 20. And then Desmond Ritter. And then Malik Willis at 86. That guy. Number two overall pick. Remember him, guys? <laughs> Just had to throw that one in there. God. God. The Jared Goff hate is unbelievable for a guy who is just doing a simple job that you should want him to do. You should want him to be either good or bad. If he's bad, it's easy as hell moving forward. If he's good, you possibly have a very good head coach. You possibly have a very good bridge quarterback moving forward. And you'll be able to compete and with the draft capital you have, move forward, etc. Guys, I have done this presentation way too many times for you. <laughs> Stop with the, we need a different quarterback. We need a backup. You don't need a backup. Do you feel bad for him? Jared? Yeah. No. Makes $30 million. I don't feel bad for him at all. I know, but like, do you think that he feels like he has the support of Detroit? No, because... As a quarterback of an NFL franchise, you need to win games if you want the support. It's that simple. So if Jared Goff really cares about the Detroit Lions fans... He'll work for it. If he really cares about them and he really wants to earn their trust, you got to win football games. It's that simple. And he's got to play well. That's how you do it. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. If you're watching on Facebook or Twitter, head over to the Woodward Sports YouTube. We will be live exclusively moving forward on YouTube. When we get back, do Detroit Lions fans need to adjust their expectations? Very similar, maybe, to the Detroit Tigers before the season. Before we go, remember, call in 313 uh, excuse me, 313 Five five two six three two two. That's three one three five five two six three two two. I want to hear what you guys have to say this morning. I do. Call in. I want to know what you think of either A, the schedule, B, Jared Goff, or C, what are your expectations for this football team this year? And I don't want to hear a long-winded, oh my goodness, 30. I don't want to hear it. Call in and tell me what you think. It's that simple. But before we go, Maddie, I need to tell you guys where I got my haircut over the weekend. And that was at Lady Jane's. Haircuts for men. They're awesome stylists. Always take care of me and let them take care of you. They way they the excuse me, the way they take care of me, which is like a king. Precision haircuts, hot leather neck shaves. Get your hair game ready in no time by visiting a Lady Jane's. Walk in any time, open ten to eight, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. He's going deep, right side. Oh, that is Edwards out there. He goes up in the air at the goal line. Hey, it's Brad Edwards here, wanting to welcome the sports marketing agency to Woolworth Sports Network to the family. Glad to have you guys. For the last decade, the sports marketing agency has literally leveraged athletes around issues such as mental health and substance abuse. Glad that we can finally start trying to get the stigma off of mental health that's been there for all these years. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little chili peppers, man. On the network for Detroit by Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. If you're looking to see what bets you should be making today, head on over to OddsTrader.com. It's the number one site for all of your game day bets. For play-by-play -play updates, live scores, and bet tracking, you can download the Odds Trader app from the App Store today. You'll find the best price on every game and sign-up offers from multiple sportsbook. Head on over to OddsTrader.com. 
All right, we're back this morning. Guys, by the way, fun fact, since I brought up Drew Brees a little earlier, do you all remember the offseason last year? Before before Dan Campbell's first game ever coached, Mark Brunel came out and said that Jared Goff reminded him of Drew Brees. I do not remember that. You don't? No. I had a field day on the show. That was like my first, I want to say it was my first week doing the show. And that came out. And I think that's what set the tail uh, order. Excuse me. That's what set off a chain of events where I just started bashing people. I mean, it I could mean, still happen. Uh, no. No, buddy. No, 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 no. Let's just not. Let's just not. Let's not do that. Let's not do that this morning. Uh, Lions fans. All right. Phone lines are open. Maddie will put in the number in the chat. All right, 313-552-6322. Call in. What to do instead. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. <laughs> <laughs> that is a typical Maddie answer. All right, listen. Lions fans, let's have, an, let's have an open, honest conversation this morning. All right? Should you be excited about your football team? I believe so, yes. I think Brad Holmes has done a very good job bringing in talent to a football team that maybe, not maybe, I could say easily. Two off seasons ago, uh, it was a disaster, especially post-Matthew Stafford trade. The team had no talent at all outside of an injured coroner who was coming off his rookie year. Uh, it is not ideal. And here we are now with an opportunity uh, after two drafts. Penny Sewell, Amon Ross St. Brown, two interior linemen, Derek Barnes, uh, Justin Jeffers, excuse me, uh, Jamar Jefferson. Uh, you can go down to this year's draft class. Are they proven commodities? Are they players that you know are going to work? No. Oh, Adam, you can't grade the Lions draft this year. The hell I can. You know why? It's this simple. I don't need to know what they're going to be. What were they coming out of college? Where were they on the draft boards? Where did the Lions take them? Aiden Hutchinson, number one consensus on most teams' draft board. You got him at number two. Pretty damn good value, if you ask me. You trade up 20 spots, essentially, for a third-round pick, which is unheard of. And who do you end up with? Arguably the number one wide receiver in the draft class, at pick number 12, when <laughs> the wide receivers were flying off the board. Drake London at 7. Uh, Garrett Wilson at 10. Chris Olave at 11. And you snag Jameson Williams at number 12. Yes, I can't tell you if by week 10 they're going to be this phenomenal football player. No, I can't. But I can tell you that Detroit, you got two very talented players on both sides of the ball at picks and positions I didn't believe you would be able to. That's a good thing. You can go to Josh Pascal from a kid out of Kentucky who really helped change that program. Are they a football program now? I, no, you have to win. But, hey, they're much better than what they were years and years ago. It was a big part of it. They're doing a great job. They're over at uh, Kentucky. But beyond the point, you get Kirby Joseph at 97. A lot of people didn't expect him to be there, but he was there. And now you've addressed four positions of need. Four positions of need, and uh, again, you're adding talent to this football team. So yeah, you should be excited, ladies and gentlemen. You should be excited. Now, should you be division winning, 11, 12, 13 wins excited? Maybe I am wrong, but I just don't see it. And I think it would be a damn shame a damn shame if this football team didn't minimum win at least seven games. Given, I believe they have taken a step forward in terms of talent. I do believe that a full year with Dan Campbell. Oof, not only with Dan Campbell. But a full year or not only with Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn and Ben Johnson. You are going to have a... a Guys, how do I explain this without sounding too optimistic? Let me put it this way, guys. No bullshit. Ben Johnson and Dan Campbell worked wonders 
with the same roster, if not a more depleted roster on offense last year than Anthony Lynn did with the full, the full roster available to him to start the year. Now, are they going to be world beaters? Probably not. Is Jameson Williams going to come into week four, week five, and just take the top off of defenses right away? We've seen it happen before with wide receivers. I wouldn't bet my money on it. I want to know what you guys think. And I'm not going to tell you to adjust your expectations unless you truly, truly believe this is a division-winning team. If you believe that, I would caution you. And I would put, I would put my, shoulder, my arm around your shoulder and I'd say, hey, man, hear me out. It, it, not this year. Now, could it happen? Absolutely. In the NFL, let's be real, anything can happen. And you don't ever, ever want to put yourself in a position where you're sitting there thinking, hey, you know what? I, not only do I think they can win 8, 9, 10 games, I think they can win the division. I, I wouldn't do that in a year two where if this was Dan Campbell's year one, and next year was his year two, I would say you could win the division in year two. I would. Because the talent, yeah, there's a lot of talent now, and next year will be another year. But where they were last year to where they are this year is head and shoulders. I just don't think that's good enough to consistently win 11, 12 football games. And, again, you still have to prove you can beat the Packers, have to prove you can beat the Vikings. A lot of games on the schedule, but we'll take our first caller of the day. Fish. Who do we got? All right, we have Max from Denver, Colorado. Max he is here from to Denver. talk Lions. He All is right. on the airwaves. All right, Max, good morning. You're on the morning show, buddy. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Thanks, Adam. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, so I saw the tweet about, like, what do you think is going to happen with Jared Goff or what do we think Jared Goff is about? And I think that Jared Goff is a good enough quarterback, and I think that he'll do all right for the Lions this year. But I think that the reason why we're probably not going to see him after this year or after we draft a new quarterback next year, if that's where we end up going, is because he's not the same type of football player that everyone else we're trying to get is. Like, Everyone we've drafted has been this hardcore, quote-unquote, gritty, play football 100% of the time. I don't want to be off the field. I want to be given my 100% in training or in a game right now. Don't have me doing this interview like Jameson Williams. He was sort of showing, like, I'm not really happy with this interview in some random-ass studio. Three days later, we see him in an interview with a football in his hand on the practice field, and he's like, man, I fucking love being here. Oops, sorry. Yeah, look, you know, <laughs> it's all good, Max. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Look, I'll, I'll tell you this. I, I think it's premature to move off of Jared Goff at the end of the year unless there are two scenarios that work out. One, they're able to trade up in the draft and get the guy they want regardless of the record. Or B, he plays like butt cheeks this year. And then you move off and you don't have to trade up because you're going to have a top pick anyways. So there is a scenario for me where he can move off at the end of the year. I still think Brad Holmes sees this guy as the starter for the next two years. I think that two years is likely if we go and draft a new quarterback and by the end of training camp or whatever, they aren't blowing us away and we think, all right, let's give him another year to sit under, have them play in some of the smaller games, get a little experience, sort of like they're doing with Trey Lance right now. But I don't think that Jared Goff has a long-term say, even if he plays like incredibly well and has us competing for the division this year, which is unlikely, or like getting the division next year. I think even if we win the division, he's just not the same character fit that the rest of the team is and that the team really just wants some hardcore dog who's going to constantly just be throwing himself in the game and trying to get us like past the sticks like Josh Allen to make the play. 
and I just don't see Jared Goff doing that. Nothing against him. I just don't think it's yeah. his play style or his Me personally, Max, uh, I don't I don't look too much into that. For me, what I want from a quarterback is, can you make the throws when I need you to make them? Are you a leader of men? Uh, is Jared Goff all of that and a bag of nuts? Probably not. I don't believe he's a franchise quarterback. I don't believe anybody in this town believes he's a franchise quarterback. So there is already subconsciously building a hey, you know what, we are eventually going to move off this guy, which makes it a little easier for me to tolerate him if he doesn't play exceptionally well. So I, I would agree with you. This team will need a franchise quarterback in the future. I appreciate the call, Max. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yep, yep. So, you know, that's just one part and one instance of Jared Goff, and I respect it. Again, yeah, I don't need any of you to like Jared Goff. I don't. Uh, I, I don't care. That's the bridge quarterback. I know I'm moving off of him, so why the hell do I care? When I'm ready, I'll make the move for a quarterback. And uh, Zach brought up an interesting point. Zach said that the problem with Goff, it's not that he's not good enough. Uh, the problem is that good enough is, is acceptable or it's fine, but Jared Goff is making too much money. But Zach, uh, I, what I would say to that is you using Mariota, Trubisky, and Bridgewater as the group to put Goff in, I think is incorrect. Goff falls under the category of hell, to be honest with you, Kurt Cousins, Ryan Tannehill. That's the group. And if you want to throw Jimmy G in there, fine, but I'm just saying Jimmy G is a winning quarterback, uh, much more successful than any of the quarterbacks I just named. But beyond the point, these are guys that are good enough, right? You can win football games with them. You could definitely win football games with these guys. But they're not carrying your franchise. And yes, you're paying them all 30 plus million. Tannehill, Cousins, Jimmy G, Dak Prescott. You're paying all these guys. And they are, they are just good enough. We don't even talk about Dak. Dak is just a good enough quarterback right now. He hasn't proven that without an excellent run game, excellent offensive line, that he can carry your team above water. These are the good enough quarterbacks. Yes, you want Justin Herbert. Yes, you want Josh Allen. But Detroit, Detroit, you can win division titles with good enough. You can win playoff games with good enough. How? You compensate it with talent and coaching. You can win with Jared Goff. I'm not saying you're going to win a Super Bowl. But don't sit here and talk to me about a Super Bowl when you're a franchise that in 58 years has one playoff game. Or, excuse me, one playoff win. You can't tell me that. You can kiss my ass. You can't tell me Super Bowl or bust expectations. Kiss my ass. You are not allowed to have that expectation at all. You start with winning the division. Building blocks here. Win the division. Contend consistently. Win playoff games. How about you start host a playoff game, dare I say, Jesus Christ. We actually host a playoff game in this town. Start there. And then we talk about Super Bowl expectations. Buffalo, earn the right to have Super Bowl or bust expectations. They won their division for multiple years in a row. They've been contending. They've been growing under Josh Allen. They've won playoff games. They've lost heartbreaking playoff games. You don't get it all instantly. And there's no rookie quarterback last year, this year, or next year that you would put into this team this year that would make you a Super Bowl contender. So shut the hell up. We got to go to break. When we get back, Corey Woods joining the show this morning. I'm excited to talk to Corey. I really am. Uh, I have a few questions for Corey, so we'll get to Corey in a quick second. But before we do, Maddie, could you tell everybody at home about that ultimate lifestyle beverage? It is officially summer, and it's the summer of Cintron, if I do say so, myself. And now you can pick up Cintron at your local Kroger, and they've got a deal going on right now. It's two for just $4, an absolute steal. Head on over to your local Kroger to pick up a Cintron. Cintron is the new energy drink for the active lifestyle. Drink it, live it with Cintron. Hi, uh, I'm Kay Cunningham. Working with Hall Financial to purchase my first home was easier than I could have ever imagined. They treated me like family from start to finish. Find out for yourself at callhallfirst.com. New to the game or a season better? OddsTrader.com has everything you need to make the right bet ahead of kickoff. Begin your handicapping journey with OddsTrader. Improve your edge by finding the best price on every game from sportsbooks in your backyard. Take advantage of the numerous sign-up bonus offers to pad your bankroll. Dive into key game statistics, 
player performance, and even account for the projected game day weather. Best of all, you can use the Odds Trader Bet Tracker to keep a log of your action. Welcome to Odds Trader, and best of luck. We're on a show here, and that's how you answer. We love our sports. We just wish they'd love us back. Detroit Sports for Detroit Sports fans. Woodward Sports. Is 8.31 in the morning, and I'm already thinking about what I'm having for lunch. That's Wing Snob. They've got fresh, juicy, hormone-free chicken, and they have the absolute best traditional wings in the game. Try out their signature sauces, Jamaican jerk or lemon pepper. Their wings are tossed to perfection in any sauce that you may choose. When the wings are this good, you're allowed to be a snob. Order online now at wingsnob.com. Wing Snob, we just have better wings. Absolutely. Wingsome does have the best wings, to be honest with you. Corey, what up, man? What up? How are you? Man, I'm... I've never, Corey, I, I, we got we Corey, got Corey we got Corey in the house. This feels like we got here. Abe bringing donuts. What the hell is going on this morning? This oh, is, we got donut this delivery. Is a good morning. Oh no, not this guy. We got oh no. We got this guy bringing in donuts. We got a cop bringing in donuts. So well, there's Isn't nothing more like stereotypical. The there's nothing <laughs> more stereotypical at all. I thought, I thought yeah, I thought we were supposed to provide the cops with the donuts. I was gonna make a comment on Corey, but I kind of don't want to get canceled. So we're just gonna. You know what? We're just going to start the conversation this morning. See what happens. You bring the black guy back on stage, and then the boom, boom, here come the cops. Yes. <laughs> well, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Corey, what's up? It's been a minute. I'm out. Uh, I'm glad you, by the way, Corey had uh, COVID. wasn't feeling great. Now he's yeah, back. Yeah, it was. It feeling was a, better? Took, took me out like an RKO. All right, hear me out, Corey. <laughs> Got a few questions for you. All right, let's go. All right. Am I crazy to say Jared Goff is the starting quarterback for the foreseeable future for this franchise under Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, meaning this year and next year? No, that's actually plausible. I think it's the plan. It, it's, it's, it's reasonable, too, because here's the thing about having Jared Goff right now. You got him on a contract for the next two years. You don't want to go ahead and play this. Oh, we're going to get a quarterback in next year's draft. You don't know what quarterback is going to do what. Remember all this talk about Spencer Rattler? Remember how quickly that soured? You don't know what C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young are going to be doing. You don't even want to be in contention to get those guys because that means that the Lions have probably lost um, – well, they probably only won, I should say, maybe three to four games. Do you really want to see them in that same position to go get one of those guys? Absolutely not. Could they trade up and get one of those guys? Possibly so. But let's, I mean, let me look in the camera and say this. If you're a team that can draft a Bryce Young or a C.J. Stroud and they perform expectations, why in the hell would you trade with the Lions? That's for, that's for one. Jared Goff is not even going to be 30 years old at the end of his deal with the Lions. So I think that what they're planning to do is they're going to plan to surround Jared Goff with the best talent that they can, similar to what the Rams, similar to what they did, Lesney did with the Rams. When Jared Goff had talent around him, he was able to win playoff games. He was able to get to a Super Bowl. So the Lions are trying to see what they can get out of Jared Goff right now because it's in the best interest of the team moving forward that he is the guy. Because that way you're able to do a lot more things with those picks and with those signings. And that's one thing I said. You said something very interesting, which was they want to build and put a ton of talent around Jared Goff. What does that mean? You know what that means? If he sucks... The rookie quarterback you bring in. He's going to benefit from that. It's going to benefit from it. (laughs) Like, they are building and they are operating under the idea that if Jared Goff is butt cheeks, we have to make a decision on quarterback sooner than later. If he's good, it buys us time to find the quarterback we want. And if Mm -hmm. he's just damn good, well, then no one's going to be complaining about Jared Goff. Let's just be real. Uh, uh, Listen, what did they do last year? They, they went ahead and got a great piece, offensive line. Now they have one of the top offensive lines in the league. They're going ahead and they're rebuilding their defensive line. They're going ahead and rebuilding that secondary. But let's just go back to the offense. They went ahead and got these weapons that they're building. What quarterback, whether it's Jared Goff or whoever, is not going to benefit from that? Who's not going to benefit from the foundation they're building right now? I, I mean, any quarterback. I can walk in, in and benefit from the foundation. <laughs> they have a great offensive line, solid run game. They're gonna. The weapons will develop over the years on yep. the offensive side. If T.J. Hawkinson could finally have a healthy year, I think people would look at him and say, "Wow, that's an elite weapon." Ideally, uh, going into last Big year, he was a top five tight end, rated on PFF. So they are doing it the right way, and you can't force it. If they would have forced it, Corey, sorry, but you know you're gonna have to eat this one. I love you. <laughs> 
If they were going to force it, they would have taken Malik Willis at two. They would have taken him at 12. That's yeah. forcing it. Yeah. That's overextending yourself to try to compensate for a situation you don't know how to solve. Mm -hmm. The Lions know how to solve the situation. They've seen Jared Goff play, uh, play well before. They're like, all right, we're going to give you talent. If you can't win with this talent, hey, buddy, we're going to kick you out. Oh, by the way, when we kick you out and all this talent stays here, we're going to bring in a rookie contract that can help us keep all this talent for the next four or five years while we build and contend. This I is mean, a win-win situation. It's a, win -win it's, it's situation. a reasonable plan. It's a win-win situation for the team. If Goff plays well, nobody's complaining. If he plays bad, nobody's complaining. Why? Because you're going to have a top pick and you're going to be taking a rookie If Goff goes out there and wins a the playoff games or, God forbid, you know, went, leads him to a division, I'll say God forbid, leads him to a division title, no, there would be mutiny of getting rid of this guy. I, I like the plan. I like I like the plan where we're going to right right now. All right, Corey, Brad Holmes mm -hmm. came out recently and talked about Dan Campbell's quote elite elite coaching traits. One of which being the player, uh, the players buying in, believing in him, uh, his communication skills. Can you walk us through a little bit behind the scenes in Allen Park? Just exactly who Dan Campbell is, uh, what he is, is what we're seeing on camera. Essentially what we're getting every single day in and out of practice. I don't want to say too much because, you know, there are some things that do happen off camera when he does speak to us. So I don't want to get too deep into that. But this is not a, this guy is not a facade. This is like really who he is. He is a very per for one. He's a. <laughs> I have no idea what Adam's <laughs> doing right now, but we'll roll with it. Dan Campbell is a very personable dude. When you're, well, I mean, I've been at the Lions practice facility when Matt Patricia was there. It was little. It was really. It was buttoned up like my shirt. It was really bottled up. It was really stuffy. Dan Campbell has made everything a lot looser. When you see players out there, one thing I noticed last year when I was at the training camp was players bought in early. They weren't out there just, oh, my God, I mean, we're here at practice. They were out there being accountable. They were out there buying into what the coaches were saying. I think what Dan Campbell has done by coming to the Detroit Lions is he's, he's reversed a lot of the bad karma and the bad fortune that they had with Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn in there. Players want to be there. Something that has not been said since Jim. Since I know I'm not going to get you on this one, Adam. Players want to be there. Something that has not been said since Jim Caldwell was there. Yeah, it's but a, you it, know, players like I, I'm not. I'm not listening to Drake Bell. Oh, we we love the man, we respect him. No, uh, it's just more. <laughs> uh, we could have went dick, but man, he treated us well. No, no, it's, 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 that's but your I will, Joik voice, really. Uh, no, I, haven't, I, I haven't heard Joik in a minute. <laughs> but, but no, I will. I will say that there, there's something to be said about when the team was when they had the season they had last year, and players came to practice every day saying that they wanted to play for Dan. They wanted to play for this coaching staff. I think it matters, and that 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 goes a long way because you've seen we've all seen teams throughout all professional sports where. When a guy, when a couple of guys do not buy into the coach, they mail it in. They don't want to come to practice, and it shows out on the game field. These guys have been playing their asses off every time they get into they get into a game for Dan Campbell. They practice their asses off, and you get this guy with the right talent. I think he's going to be the leader of men that they need right now. That's what the Lions need. They needed a leader of men. They already got the X's and O's with their coaching staff. They needed somebody who's going to be able to go in here and be a respectable voice and face of this team. And I think that is Dan Campbell. Yeah, look, you have to be able to communicate as a leader anywhere you work. And a head coach in the NFL is a leader of men. Sean McVay is so good at it. Cal Shanahan is so good at it. These guys are just the levels above everyone so yes there is something to being a communicator but jim caldwell and dan campbell are very different in that perspective oh yeah or, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying just about it about the about one was more yeah. reserved and i yeah. think dan is very not only very open he, uh, he's the definition of an extrovert <laughs> he, he really is and this is a guy again an open communicator yeah. he's very clear very straightforward and there's nothing better you get from a leader then when they communicate with you and things are very clear. It's even even when you're when you're talking to him and asking him questions. You we've all seen coaches who have been really condescending and give you so much coach speaking, coach jargon. He just goes ahead and says it what it is. He answers your question the way that you want it answered. When you asked him about the primetime games, he I almost just, pissed he just kept myself. It real. He just He's kept like, it real. yeah, look, we get more rest. I'm chilling.
<laughs> and some people were saying, you know what? I had a couple of Instagram followers say, oh, my God, that is such a lose, losing concept. He should have just said that we went out there and we got screwed and then they will make them pay. No, that's fake. He kept it real. Look, hey. let's just be honest, guys. <laughs> huh? Let's just be real. Fantasy football. All right? Mm -hmm. Lions are playing on Sunday night. What fantasy implications do you have? Huh? What? Jameson Williams? Amon Ross St. Brown? TJ Hawkinson? Who I wouldn't start on my fantasy team this year? DeAndre Swift, if he's healthy? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Lions need to earn the right uh, to play into primetime. Also, keep in mind, they do have a primetime game. It's guaranteed every year. It's a Thanksgiving game. So, yeah, but it counts. But, 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 it's a primetime yeah, game. Yeah, Nobody else but, but, is playing but, in that slot. Even like what Dan said, they can still get flexed. And who said they can't get flexed? I thought that was something right there because he's saying, like, like, who's to say that we can't play so well that they want to flex us to a primetime game? You know, this has always been an issue, by the way. I believe it's an issue is the game at Lambeau every year at the end of the year. Hate that. That is the worst thing ever. Hate it. Because by the time the last week of the season arrives, typically everything is decided in the mm -hmm. North and in the NFC. Typically. There are some years where it's open. Yeah. Like, obviously, I want to say 2014. Both teams were 11-4. and four. Once in the franchise's history, it happened that way. Yeah. They need to play the Packers, Bears, and Vikings earlier in the year, mid to week 14, 15 at the latest. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you they get a primetime game easily. Easily. But... Beyond the point, I want to get this question answered by you before uh, you right. go, Corey. First five games of the year. Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Commanders, good Vikings, Patriots. Got some uh, friendly games. Friendly? Friendly games. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. How disappointed would you be if they didn't have a winning record after five games? I would say that I would I would for um, for me I gotta be be honest I'm not gotta be ob objective so I wouldn't be disappointed but should for, for Lions fans if they are not bare minimum three and two you should you should have some you should have some concerns you, you not 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 jump off the bridge concerns but you should be like wait a minute what's going on here oh because they play Seattle too I forgot they like a, they should be three and two. After that, because I mean, I think they can get they can get the Commanders, they can get Seattle, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think they can get New England. Uh the Philly game. That's a tricky one. That's that's a that's a pick 'em. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Corey. I'm with you. Well, thanks so much for hopping on, Corey. No uh, when we get back, ladies and gentlemen, we will discuss Brad Holmes saying, "Of course, you know I'm gonna talk about it. You know, oh. I'm damn right, I'm gonna talk about it." Brad Holmes. Continuing his love not only for Dan Campbell, but Jared Goff. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But before we do, not only do we have to take a break, uh, you need to call in. 313-552-6322. Lines are open. Give me your Detroit Lions opinion, whether it's on the schedule, whether it's on your expectations, or your concerns or praise for Jared Goff. Uh, feel free to call in. But before we do, Maddie, could you tell everybody at home about the best defense on and off the field? Yes, I can. I, I got a number for you guys to also call if you need to feel safe and get peace of mind. That's Guardian Alarm. Whether you're at home or on the road, they're 24 7 local monitoring. Make sure what's important to you is safe. Call 1 800 Stay yeah. Out for peace of mind. That's right. You heard fish. 1 800 Stay Out yeah, right now and so let them know that balls. Woodward Sports Hope sent you're happy. you. Cintron is the official energy drink of the Red Wings, proud partners of the Detroit Pistons, and exclusively served at Little Caesars Arena. If you're looking for premium ingredients, long-lasting energy, balanced hydration, essential vitamins, and great taste, Cintron is your top choice. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> A touch of weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Thank you to all the fans for making Woodward Sports your number one online destination for Detroit sports. We promise not to drop the ball. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Also featured on the Roar on 99.1, 93.5, and 94.7 HD2. Are you being mean to fish? I'm not. I'm not. We have uh, another caller this He's morning. actually being nice to me for once. <laughs> wow. He's dressed oh, up in a suit and tie. It's because it's Taco Tuesday. It's, it's, no, it's a tuxedo. 
tuxedo. You, have, you didn't notice the tuxedo he's wearing? Oh my god. <laughs> Fish, who do we got on I the line, it. buddy? Uh, we great. have Kyle from Mount Pleasant, but he's uh, on the road. A uh, Kyle? Ooh, it's okay, it's okay. Does he sound like crap? Sounded fine. All right, well, Kyle, you're on the morning show, man. How you doing, buddy? Drive safe. Good morning, my friend. How are you guys doing? We're good, we're good. Can't I complain. Just wanna, I just want to say thank you guys. You guys make my morning every morning. Thanks, man. We appreciate that. I'm glad. I'm really happy about that. That's awesome. You don't have to lie to Adam like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I'll make this short and sweet, but I just want to remind people that the Lions are actually not as bad as the paperwork showed them that they were. Uh, they had, what, eight games that they were into it that they lost? Yep. One was a tie. One was a tie. They could have easily have been 11 win team. They yeah. could have easily have been. If, 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 what was Anthony Lynn, if he wasn't play calling, we could be talking about a complete. If we were 11 win team, nobody would be talking about, hey, Jared Goff this, Jared Goff that. Everyone would be like, holy crap, Jared Goff. And he didn't have any offensive weapons. Who do you have? Amon Ross St. Brown? Come on. That kid wouldn't have been a, a, a fourth string wide receiver on any other team. Yeah, I'm not no. trying to take anything from Amon Ross St. Brown. I love the kid. I love his. I love his. Uh, his ability to get away from defenders. But let's just let's call it what it is. He 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 took a he took a situation and he made the best of that he could with it. And I think if we had better play calling, we could have been an 11 win team this year. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, you know. Jesus Christ, 11's a lot. <laughs> I, no, I, I I believe the number was if they score 20 points in every single game last year, they would have won six, seven, or eight games um, uh, total on the year, uh, something like that. Uh, the point is, I do agree, Jared Goff didn't have much to work with last year. Starting the year with Anthony Lynn uh, obviously was a disaster. Uh, but look, I, I, like, I like where your attitude is going, especially on this team this year, which is... This is the consensus I'm getting, at least, is everyone feels this team is a lot better than last year. Yeah, I just think the talent, Brad Holmes, again, he's adding talent, and that's all you can ask from your GM. Exactly. And, and the coaching, I, I think, will be better this year. I'd like to see them keep that aggressiveness. As long as they're not going for it on the 13-yard line in the first quarter, I'm, good for, I'm all good for it. But uh, outside of that, at the end of the day, uh, this team will be judged by wins and losses, and my minimum, I think, is going to be seven. I think this is a seven-win team in the worst-case scenario. They just have such a friendly schedule. I believe Ben Johnson and Dan Campbell are going to do a very good job play calling. Uh, this is going to be a fun team to watch. They're not going to be explosive, but I would argue they're going to be efficient. No, I agree. I appreciate you guys. We appreciate Thank it, you guys man. so yeah, much yeah. for having me on. Anytime, anytime. Uh, you know what? Yeah. That Again, uh, this is where, uh, you know, you have to balance your anger in life, you know? You can't always be angry. And I get Lions fans uh, being upset with last year or, or saying, hey, we should have or could have. That's fine. Uh, Every team can do it every single year. It's just part of the game. But it is very important to understand that last year is a, is a blessing in disguise because you end up with, obviously, who could argue against this? The best player coming out of the draft. He was number one on most NFL teams' draft boards. Am I going to take your draft board or 32 NFL franchises? Seven of which probably effed it up. But hey, the majority are typically right. Aiden Hutchinson, you get him at number two. You're in a good position. You now move up for Jameson Williams. The Matthew Stafford trade looks a lot better. Your team is moving forward. You're actually going through a real legitimate rebuild, which is you're adding talent. Your coach is not under any pressure going into year two. The fan base is, I want to say, somewhat in sync on what's going on with the team outside of maybe a few things like the Jared Goff situation. But the rebuild's going how the uh, excuse me the rebuild is going the way it should. Uh, Fish, we have another caller who is on the line, buddy. Oh, we have Josh from Arizona. Maybe he saw Sam Flano down there. All right, Josh, the thanks for calling in, buddy. How are you this morning? What do you got? I'm doing. 
I'm doing great. Uh, how are you doing, Ab? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm calling in. Uh, I think we're going to have anywhere from seven games seems reasonable. Eleven is like, are you smoking something? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, I think Jared Goff is probably have about 3,300 yards, 24 touchdowns, maybe 13, 14 interceptions. He, if he plays about 70, 80 percent of what he did the last few games, we're going to win a few ball games, maybe eight, nine. That's pushing it. But um, we're handcuffed him for at least two years. Like you say, he plays good, good, and he plays like cheeks. Like it's easier to move off. But uh, I think we're going to win about seven games, eight games tops. Yeah, and I think that's a realistic and fair number. And on top of that, not only do I think that's realistic and fair, I think you brought up something very interesting, which is Jared Goff's stat line for the entire year. I I think it would be... I would like to think he throws for more than 3,300 yards, but beyond the point, yes, if you get 70, 80% of what he was down the stretch, you're going to have a pretty damn good football team. You're going to be able to win football games. Yeah. And last I checked, last I checked, there are a lot of teams on that schedule that are in a similar position to you. They're in a rebuild, they've added talent, but you're just not sure. You're just not sure if they're going to take that step. And that's a good problem to have on a schedule. Well, let's be real. I mean, there's maybe two or three teams in the NFL that have an easier schedule than the Lions do this year. True. All right, Josh, Absolutely appreciate true. the call, buddy. Hope you're good in Arizona, man. You too. Thank you. Oh, man. You know, Maddie, you know what's funny? Is I'll spend, I'll spend my nights just hammering through, like, the Lions history, going through records, seasons, individual performances, games, primetime uh, versus uh, weekday games. <sighs> I've never, ever encountered a, a scenario where I am upset that they don't get enough primetime love. Like, when they have a 12-5 and five record or they win the division and get to an NFC title game, hey, and they don't get a primetime game the following year, I'm all for it. I'm all for riots, mutiny. I, I'm, I'm here for it. Until then, uh, it's it's a bit much. Fish, who else do we have on the line, buddy? Uh, we have nobody else this morning. Oh, well, thanks for raising your hand. I didn't wave you! <laughs> Unbelievable, Fish. Are you seeing things? I think you're seeing things. Fish, what does this mean? I didn't wave. God damn you, buddy. <laughs> you need to, maybe um, you need to get your eyes checked. This is from Mark. Adam, how stoked are you about Brad Holmes double dipping on the edge and D line right now? I loved it. I loved it because that's how you build a football team. You build it within the trenches. He addressed the offensive line, finished it with Penesul. He then drafted two interior linemen in the same draft. The following year goes out and gives you one of these for all the Malik Willis people and takes, uh, excuse me, uh, Aiden Hutchinson number two overall. He then flips a double burger right here, right? So now you have two things going, trades up and gets a wide receiver instead of Kyle Hamilton. And then in pick 46, he gets an edge rusher. Oh, yeah. Two of the first three picks they had this year were edge rushers. I am all for it. All for it. That's how you build a football team. That is how you build a football team. I... Again, could not be more happy with the work and the job that Brad Holmes is doing. This is a legitimate front office. This is a legitimate leadership group. This is how you rebuild. This is how you make good decisions. And how do you become great? You don't become great by just making a good decision, right? Drafting Barry Sanders. Drafting Calvin Johnson. Drafting Matthew Stafford. All right, then what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can't just make one snapshot good decision. Being great is making a good decision after good decision after good decision. On and on and on and on and compiling them and building them and stacking them. That's how you build greatness. We'll take one more caller before the top of the hour. Fish, who do we got, buddy? Alrighty, let's start with Bob from Chicago. He wants to talk about uh, Breeze and Golf comparisons. Okay. All right, Bob, you're on the Morning Woodward Show this morning. Bob from Chicago, how are you, buddy? I'm doing pretty good there, Adam. Uh, I think it's in, it's interesting that Golf and Breeze were both franchise quarterback draft picks, and Breeze, just a couple years into his tenure with the Chargers, they draft Philip Rivers to replace him. So what do they do? They trade him to Miami. He fails a physical. 
which leads to Nick Saban getting fired eventually from Miami. And then they ship him out to New Orleans. So here's a highly touted college quarterback, top draft pick. He gets shipped out twice from the team that drafted him. And so we have this struggle that ensues where he has to overcome that whole mental space of going through that struggle. So Goff is in the same boat. Goff's picked number one overall. He leads the team to a Super Bowl, and, the, and Gurley gets hurt. Trump has an ACL tear. The O-line gets diminished. And they move off of him and get rid of him to Detroit. And so we have this similar career path where both Breeze and Goff were discarded by the teams that drafted them. And sometimes, just like a butterfly gets strong and gets the ability to fly through getting out of the cocoon, maybe Breeze and Goff are both following that same trajectory. You know, uh, it's so interesting you bring that up because, you know, Breeze had such a rough start to his career. And then he found stability and success with Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints and Mickey Loomis. And with Jared Goff, he found instant, instant gratitude, instant success after his rookie year because Sean McVay was brought in. And then it was constant winning seasons. And it was a Super Bowl appearance. And then it was an NFC title appearance, I believe. Or no, uh, two divisional appearances. And it was a lot of injury, regression in play. Drew Brees really just never got a fair shot. He was performing in Los Angeles, or excuse me, San Diego at the time. And then they drafted Phillip Rivers. He was pretty decent. With Goff, I seen a kid become a franchise quarterback and then just hit this ultimate decline. And now, ideally, you'd like to see him level out, become a good quarterback. Can he get back to a Drew Brees, quote-unquote, franchise quarterback level? Oh, man, that's tough for me to call. I would bet my money no. Uh, I just don't well, see I think, it. I think what it does, though, I think the mental toughness going through something like that, the mental toughness that creates for an athlete could be substantial. And if you can get through that and get the mental toughness that comes with that, it could maybe take you to a whole other level in your competitive ability because you have the mental toughness that you need to be successful. From a personal standpoint, I would agree. I think you need to overcome hurdles in life to be successful and Jared Goff obviously has had a ton of them over the last few years and I think he's got the right coach in his ear with Dan Campbell I think this is a guy that will inspire confidence along with Ben Johnson I think they're going to put him in positions to succeed so yeah you know what absolutely could we see a a different version of Goff a more confident a more mature Jared Goff I don't think you're crazy for saying that well look what Campbell's selling the team on as far as team identity he's all about grit and if there's anything that team got last year it was learning how to be gritty in that vikings game as bad as the season was that vikings game was a microcosm of the potential of what it could be it was magical in some sense that last drive uh where they celebrated you could see that hey there's something here and if they can replicate that this season it's going to be fun to watch Absolutely. Well, Bob, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much for calling in this morning. I uh, hope you're doing good, man. Thank you. Sure thing. Take care. Yep. All right, guys, we are going to head to a quick, excuse me, wow, a quick, <laughs> a quick break. When we get back, I do want to discuss the off season that has been for the Detroit Lions under Brad Holmes. Uh, things I've noticed that would encourage me to believe that they are heading in the right direction. But before we do, Maddie, we got a broadcast next week. We are live from Big Boys next week, and I am so excited. Live from Big Boy on Wednesday in Brighton. We will be there. All three shows will be live because now the Strawberry Fest is back at Big Boy, so why would we not? They brought back some of the classic breakfast items like strawberry French toast, hotcakes, and waffles. And if you're not feeling breakfast, don't worry. They've got a new strawberry bacon chicken wrap, a crispy chicken wrap, a nacho wrap, or a strawberry salad. And let's not forget dessert, people. They've got a very delicious strawberry pie for just $1.99 with the purchase of $7.99 or more at participating Big Boy locations. At Wingsnob, staying humble's not our forte. We just have better wings. We're back at it again with our crispy golden brown fries and our famous boneless wings. Juicy, tender, hormone-free chicken. Your favorite signature sauces with no bone. Just when you thought wing snob couldn't get any better. 
Order online at wingsnob.com today. Wingsnob. We just have better wings. Fellas, let's be honest. We like things to be easy. We like simple stuff, like sports seven days a week. We like things uncomplicated, like Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Sign in, sit down, watch your favorite team play. And before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. <laughs> We are the network for Detroit. By Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. For all of you in the chat, I'm so sorry, but you lost. You didn't get to 125 likes. Why? You didn't? You said it before the top of the hour? Or I said what before was 9 a.m. Before 9 a.m.? Yeah. They got to 122. And it is 901. Well, well, that that doesn't, no that's cigar. not fair. Yeah, I'll do well, it to you. technically... Uh oh. Speaking, it's not nine o'clock yet in certain parts of the world. So didn't we make a deal like a couple weeks ago that you get to pick my tattoo and I get to pick yours? Yeah, yeah. Because I already picked yours out. Yeah, you don't want to know what I picked out for you. So let's Neither just move you. on. <laughs> yeah, Stick knows exactly what I picked for you. Uh, Jim Caldwell. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, God. it doubles though. It doubles. It's two things that doubles. you hate. All right. All right, careful, careful what you do to me, because I will 10x <laughs> it on your body. You have no idea. Anyways, guys, top of the hour here on the morning show, uh, here on the Woodward Sports Network. Thank you guys for joining us this morning, live on YouTube. If you haven't dropped a like on the video, make sure you drop a like. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe, and of course, check us out on social media at Woodward Sports. Let's get this thing started. There's been a lot of Lions talk this morning. Optimism from the callers that have called in, and I don't blame them. Again, I've seen a lot of good moves coming out of Allen Park since Brad Holmes took over. Uh, something I've paid attention to that caught my eye over the course of, I would say, the last month and a half, two months, is the Lions' ability to dictate information. Typically... You hear a lot of rumbling, leaks, uh, reports coming out that end up being very true. And typically, the good front offices, the good franchises, they're able to keep the real information away from the reporters, away from the beat writers, away from media. And the Lions this year, I mean, they really, really kept it close behind closed doors. I mean, we were the day of guaranteed it was Kayvon Thibodeau. I mean, there was legitimate, legitimate sources. And look, things could have changed from then till the draft, but the point is, this is a football team and really a front office under Brad Holmes that is maneuvering media. It is a front office that understands how to get out a message, when to get out a message, when not to put out information they don't want out there. What are you staring at me for? Fish, are you singing? <laughs> that music just started really Oh, weird. Jesus Christ. I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Did you oh, want me to start singing? No, she's Kinda. staring at you, and I'm thinking you're the one that's singing. I didn't stare at him. You were like... Maybe I was staring at him. Uh, we, we do. Fish, <laughs> stay away from Matt. It should ruin your life, man. <laughs> Okay, well, we do have callers if you would like to take them. <laughs> All right, fine. Who do we have on the line, buddy? Oh, let's go with Quinn from Grand Rapids. He Quinn? wants to talk about, yes, he wants to talk about Jared Goff. All right, Quinn, what do you got on Jared Goff, buddy? All right, good morning. Can you guys hear me? Good morning, we do, yes. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll kind of circle the golf talk and the kind of what you're going with right now, too, Adam. Um, I think when we talk about Jared Goff last year, and by the way, this is Piston Fan Eleven in the chat. Shout out to the chat and all of my golf haters out there. Um, <laughs> Great Lake, what's up, bro? Um, there are two Jared Goffs that played football last year. All right, there was Jared Goff under Anthony Lynn, and then there was Jared Goff with Ben Johnson and Dan Campbell, and I guess you could say Josh Reynolds too. Um, when we talk about golf, we have to look at them. I think as two different people last year because <clears throat> first half of the year. I was ready to scoop my eyeballs out with a spoon watching him play. Second half of the year, you could see him get a little swag, get a little confidence, 
the play calling was better, and he was a different guy. So I think just kind of saying golf was trash last year, there's two chapters to that book last year, and you can ignore one if you want to, but that's just kind of what it is. So I expect golf to play like Ben Johnson golf this year because Ben Johnson is the offensive coordinator. We'll see, you know, if he ends up living up to that or not, but he had a pretty solid end of the year. Another thing I'll circle into that kind of goes into your Brad Holmes talk, excuse me, is that I listened to the Brad Holmes interview on Rich Eisen. And Holmes, when he was asked if golf is his guy long term, that was the terminology that Eisen used. Holmes immediately pivoted and said, listen, we, you know, we love G.A. He's definitely our guy this year. Every guy's going to have to compete year in and year out to prove themselves. So he went specifically and said, you got to prove yourself year to year. He didn't go in and jump and say, this is our guy forever. And I think that's the perfect way to approach it. And, and circling back to that even more into what you're talking about, I see people that like and trust what Brad Holmes is doing that also somehow are convinced that he's going to tie himself to a mediocre quarterback. Which is for, insane, isn't it? Right. I mean, I hear, I mean, I love him to death, but like Maz and Armani both, like, all the time, they're like, do you want to pay Jared Goff $40 million for the next five years? I'm like, we're not, I don't think that's the plan at all. So, if you trust Brad Holmes, folks, trust that he understands that Jared Goff is probably not the long-term guy. Let him cook, let him build his team, and then when it's time to move off Jared, if we got to give up a little extra draft capital to move up and get a quarterback, guess what we have? Cap Absolutely. We just Absolutely. Jared Goff. And now we can replenish the roster with, instead of with draft picks with some free agents. Brad Holmes knows way more than any of us. I like what he's done so far, and he's not going to tie us to a mediocre quarterback long term. So let's just all sit back and enjoy it. Let's hope we see Jared Goff like he played under Ben Johnson last year that let some of the other players develop around him and enjoy the season. I think seven or eight wins <clears throat> are hard not to find on the schedule. And uh, it should be a fun year for us. Hey, man, I'm with you. You look at that schedule on the screen right now. It, Philly, Washington, Minnesota, Seattle, New England, all before the bye week. You got Dallas, Miami, Green Bay, Chicago, New York. Then you have the Bills, Jacksonville, Minnesota. The, I mean, there are three to four, two to three game periods where you look at it and say, we should win two out of the three. Uh, the, the games are there to be won. Oh, excuse me. The games are there to be won. Quinn, gr excellent call, man. I would hug you if you were here in person. Great call, man. That, that, is, that is what I look forward to every morning. That was excellent. That, that's how you I do it. appreciate you guys. Yeah, we appreciate you, Quinn. Thank you so much. That's a call, Maddie. Uh, that's a well-thought-out, well-spoken call that's the shit i'm talking about sorry fish that's what i'm talking about yeah. and yes you can't again there can be a world where i can have a conversation with you and say i don't like that brad holmes did this but i like that he did that right now all he has shown me is that a he's not committed to any quarterback because if he was if he was you would know and it would be glaringly obvious two yes he has to put weapons around golf i'm gonna i'm gonna let you guys in on an inside secret Are you ready for this I have to stand up for this. Brad Holmes has to surround Jared Goff with weapons. You ready? Because if he doesn't, the next quarterback that walks in is thrown at people like me. Does that make sense? So right now, the quarterback... Excuse me. God damn you, stick. I just realized what was happening. Anyways... The point is, the point is, Jamison Williams, I'm on Ross St. Brown, a great offensive line, a run game. TJ Hawkinson hopefully can get healthy and just play some goddamn football. But anyways, the point, if I told you you bring in a rookie quarterback at the end of the year with an upcoming draft class, you'd be like, oh yeah, feeling good about the rookie quarterback situation. If I told you last year you were bringing in a court, rookie quarterback into the situation Jared Goff had last year, you would tell me, Adam, we are setting him up for failure. He needs to sit for the year. Brad Holmes must surround Jared Goff with weapons because that is what is essential to the future of the franchise. You must be able to do it. You must be able to do it. This is, again, to harp on what Quinn said, 
if you believe in Brad Holmes, and if you are, again, not that he isn't human, that he couldn't make a mistake, but he has given zero inclination, zero evidence, zero, zero possibility. He hasn't even hinted at the idea that, hey, we, this is our guy from a standpoint of he's a franchise quarterback. Notice he's never said he's a franchise quarterback. They believe he's their guy this year, possibly next year, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't want to hear the Jared Goff slander. Last year, there was a tale of two seasons, or excuse me, two stories. Two parts of the season, guys. Two parts. Anthony Lynn, effing disaster. The guy was a fumble machine. Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell, Josh Reynolds. That Jared Goff looked pretty good. And you're, again, that's coming from the guy that wanted to rip apart Jared Goff's throat last year. All right? You have to be fair here, and you have to be honest. The guy can be a decent quarterback when surrounded with very good players around him. Brad Holmes is doing that. He's giving him the opportunity to succeed, and you should want him to succeed because it means your football team will then succeed. We have to take a quick break. When we get back, Sean Murphy. Sean Murphy, Maddie's favorite person here in the building, joins the Morning Woodward Show to talk the NBA draft lottery. Will the Pistons get fisted or will they do the <laughs> fisting again for a second straight year we will discuss that next but before we do i gotta tell you about my bookie my bookie the nba playoffs and nhl playoffs have already t- kicked off guys we're into the second round in the nhl playoffs we're into the conference finals now with the nba get your bets on you can do series bets you can do individual game bets prop bets whatever you feel is necessary you can do it all at my bookie bet from anywhere anytime using my bookie sign up using code woodward and if you suck or you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. It took exploring 50 different formulas and hosting countless taste tests, but we believe Gypsy Vodka is the smoothest vodka on the market. Don't believe us? Ask the owners. We're Mike and Adam Kazanowski with High Five Spirits Distillery. We're in close to about 1,200 locations throughout Michigan. We wanted to create a brand that was geared more towards freedom, love, adventure, and at the end of the day, we really wanted to tell a story that inspired other people to take risk, follow their dreams, whatever that might be. Hey, Scott from Wood Bet Show. I can't put down my new favorite app, OddsTrader.com, with all the live scoring, play-by-play updates, and it's the best place to check all the odds at all the different sports books throughout the day. Make sure you download OddsTrader.com from the App Store today. And of course, before we leave, I'm going to give you a free winner. The under in the Houston-Boston game today, under 9. And also, make sure you check out the Woodward Bet Show and download OddsTrader.com today. Detroit has the best sports fans in the world. That's why they deserve the best sports coverage in the world. We are the Woodward Sports Network. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. I'm so pleased... To announce, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Sean Murphy with us this morning. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, everybody. So glad to be here. On the big desk this time, this feels this feels like home, Adam. Good to see you. Yeah, good. Uh, don't get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be up on here tonight, Adam, for I the know, NBA lottery stream. So All right, talk sure me through it. In. Talk me through it. Give me the projections. Where are the Pistons projected to land? Ideally, if they just... Look, last year... Number one pick, I think everybody, fair to expect and be excited to possibly get it. Yeah. I I don't care this year. Mm -hmm. Top three, minimum. Just get top three, and you're going to walk away, I believe, with a fantastic player. The hell's going to happen tonight, Sean? Yeah, so they can fall as low as seven. They currently have tied for the best lottery odds, which is currently at 14.5% for that top overall pick. They have a 53% chance in landing the top five. And Pistons fans, we got our quarterback, we got our franchise guy, our franchise point guard last year in Cade Cunningham. This is the year we can, where we can go and potentially get that running mate, that Robin to our Batman, so to speak. So when looking at the top of the draft, if we can land, like you said, in that top three where, those, where there's those three dynamic forwards and those wings that can all defend but also stretch the floor shoot the three guard multiple positions any guy that you can get and any guy that you can add to this roster alongside Kate Cunningham is going to come make an impact day one all right what are we what are we going to do regardless of where they end up in the lottery given I believe they need to move off Jeremy Grant 
And after the whole DeAndre Ayton debacle, I don't think that's somebody I'd want to pursue. What are their options in free agency or in the draft to get Cade that Robin? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, DeAndre Ayton, great player, going to be available. But if you're going to pay him, it's going to have to be max dollars. And Detroit's going to have to decide, is that the kind of money they want to pay after watching that Game 7? I don't know how anyone makes that kind of commitment. Personally, if you're looking at free agency, Mitchell Robinson from the New York Knicks, a 7-foot rim-protecting big man who can catch lobs, protect the paint, a guy that's really solid. But Detroit, when you're looking at the draft, as far as big men and people that can help protect the basket, you're looking at those three wings that the top. You're looking at Jabari Smith Jr. from Auburn. You're looking at Chet Holmgren from Gonzaga, our guy Adam. And then also you look at Paolo Bonchero from Duke. Talk about just three guys who can both pass the ball, shoot the ball, rebound, block, but also they can just do everything on the court. They're the kind of guys that would be the perfect pick and roll candidate for Cade. And that's the kind of thing that's going to unlock Cade's game and take it to the next level. That guy that can play that tango with Cade. Now if they fall out of that top three and aren't able to go get one of those wings, then you maybe look at Shaden Sharp from Kentucky, a dynamic scoring guard who can go and get himself a bucket, someone that's very reminiscent to a Jalen Green, someone that would be better on your team when you have a Cade Cunningham in the first place. But then you also look at guys like Keegan Murray down from Iowa as well, someone that kind of fits what we're looking for, a little bit older coming into the draft, but someone that can be a really good starter in the NBA for a long time. There's a lot of options here for Troy Weaver, and that's the thing that's going to make him lick his lips and be ready to go on draft night I think it has to be a big I think you need to get somebody that's why Bagley is such a big deal by the way when Bagley yep. joined the Pistons midseason you saw Kate take that next step this is a guy he could run the pick and roll with yep uh, I still think they need another big guy but is Sadiq Bay the answer at two I mean, Sadiq Bey at, at the two is going to be a really difficult position for him. I think that's certainly something. You're looking at a lot of these lineups, Adam, in the playoffs. You're looking at a lot of positionless basketball, a lot of long, versatile lineups of guys who can defend multiple positions but also shoot the three. So Sadiq Bey, with that alone, is definitely going to be someone that's valuable anytime he's stepping on the basketball court. I think the big thing here, obviously, like you said, getting that big, getting that complimentary piece is going to be big. And Marvin was a huge addition for us just when he brought in the offense but it's about getting someone who can bring it on the defensive end as well because as much as I loved Marvin Bagley and everything that he bought brought to the Detroit Pistons the biggest thing that you noticed was he couldn't really protect the paint he couldn't really stop offense from coming in there would be multiple nights even with Bagley on the team where we would have 60 plus point nights in the paint allowed for other teams that just can't happen so on top of what they can bring on the offensive end like you said someone that can come in and help stop the bleeding on the defensive end that's going to help us win a lot more games in this you season. can't solve everything in one year for but sure the reality is this team needs a legitimate rim protecting five that can run the pick and roll Mm -hmm. And this team legitimately needs a scoring two. Yep. And Sadiq Bey can flex into a, a wing a three, which is fine. He can also handle the rock, but I think it's pretty clear. Cade's the guy. Yeah. Uh, that's the guy I want with the rock 70, 80% of the time. It's that simple. Yeah, absolutely. Adam, you talk about drafting the cocaine, and you talk about like everything that we just went through with the NFL draft. You look at the NBA draft right now, the first thing you do, like you said in the NFL, what do you do? First positions, quarterback and edge rusher when you're building a team. First thing you look for in the NBA is a guy that can carry your franchise, a guy you can build around. The second thing that you look around is for those long, versatile defenders, because if you're looking at the way the NBA is going right now, length, defense, versatility. That's going to be the big things. You look at the Boston Celtics, the Dallas Mavericks, the Warriors even. Every, almost every team that's available fits that mold. So if I'm Troy Weaver, if I'm, if I'm in that front office, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Kate Cunningham and I'm wondering how I can get someone athletic, long, and someone that can help him stop the bleeding on the defensive end. Yeah, look, I mean, at the end of the day, what this team needs going into next year because look they're not a championship contending team no i think they need to address the big mm -hmm. and you can live without that two guard for now given that kate can obviously put yeah. up buckets and so can sadiq bay to an extent but kate needs a pick and roll guy you yep. need a rim protector and then ideally the way the nba works is you're going to be able to snag somebody in free agency over the coming years at that two guard position yeah and i think that's how the evolution uh, or that's how they'll evolve 
into a championship contender. But Sean, it's not easy to build what the Golden State Warriors built all right. in house. Yes, you like Killian Hayes off the bench. Yes, you like Sadiq Bay. Isaiah Stewart is a good role player coming off and playing 10 minutes, 12 minutes a night when you have a big man in front of him. But uh, there's still a long way away. It's, yeah. We're a very long way uh, from being a championship team. Yeah. And I don't know if that two guard is in this draft. And I don't think he'll be available like a Jabari Smith given. I don't know if they're going to be picking in the top three. No yeah. chance in hell they go from they go up to one last year and they don't get punched this year. Yeah, it's hard to envision a team getting that number one pick two years in a row, especially just with Detroit's lottery luck over the past year. I mean, remember, after we won the lottery last year, before that, it was 50 years since we'd won it in the first place. So it's hard to come up here and expect us to go, yeah, we're going to get the number one overall pick in this year's draft. But, I mean, realistically, again, the thing that you could be hopeful for as a Detroit Pistons fan, as someone that's watching, is, you know, it's the stability in the front office. It's Troy Weaver. You know that he's going to be aggressive with whatever we do. And Isaiah Stewart, one thing about him, he's definitely not offensively the big that Cade Cunningham needs alongside him to complement. And defensively, he's not quite the best rim protector either. However, he is a really switchable defender, and he can guard multiple guys, which is something that brings a ton of value. So Isaiah Stewart, he might not necessarily be our starting five when we're winning games, but he's definitely someone that can bring you a lot of value on an NBA court on a night-to-night basis. That's a guy that you that you that that can help you win some, ga- some games going forward. What are forward. you doing for agency? In free agency, well, the Pistons have 40-something million dollars in cap space, a lot of team options. So, honestly, if, if I'm Troy Weaver, I'm not really stressing if I hold tight and wait until I want to use that money for someone better. One thing you can do, you can go and dress some things like Mitchell Robinson, like I said, from New York. Um, Sure, Jalen Brunson, if he's going to be on the market and available. After watching Dallas and everything they've done, that's hard to envision, but Detroit will definitely be in those conversations nonetheless. You know, they're going to look and they're going to address those needs. Well, 2023, you got some some players, and I don't think they should spend at all. You got Bradley Beal, Mm -hmm. Chris Middleton. I am not naming... For any of you that bring this up, I will not be naming James Harden, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and Kyrie Irving as a part of this deal. Yeah, they can no. kiss my ass. They can <laughs> never, never, ever come to Detroit. So, anyways, yeah. back to reality. Nikola Jokic, didn't he sign an extension? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know why he's on here. It doesn't it, make any sense. It could be Nikola Vucevic. No, it's Jokic. Oh, it's Jokic? Yeah, okay, it okay, is okay. Nikola Jokic. But anyways, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Eric Bledsoe. Yeah. Uh, Chris Middleton, Bradley Beal, I think, is the home run pick right there. Bradley Beal at the ripe age of 31 by the time he, he gets there, I think that's a guy that can come in and give you what you want from a two-guard. The problem is none of these guys are 27, 28, coming off the first rookie contract. And right. They're very appealing where you want to throw max dollars at. None of these players, I think, are franchise-altering. So even if you wait till 2023, again, when when do you address that you you do need a number two. You saw what Giannis couldn't do mm-hmm. without Chris Middleton, and that's just mm-hmm. Chris Middleton. Yeah. You need a second guy to win in this league. You need yep. the one, and I think Cade is the one. Mm-hmm. Who is that to? Can Sadiq Bay develop into it? I wouldn't bet my money on it, right. but I'd be very happy if he did. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you're looking at at the importance of of role players and depth in that bench. And the thing is, is that with the Detroit Pistons, with their financial situation going forward, they're only committed to 85 of 122 million dollars of the salary cap next year. That number goes down to 47 million dollars the following season. So the nice thing is, is whatever Detroit decides to do in this free agency class, that doesn't restrict or that doesn't hold back the actual financial flexibility that we have going forward. So we are kind of playing with house money a little bit. As far as that goes, we do have a couple dead contracts on the books, but those will be mostly off after the next couple of years. I think the big thing is that Troy Weaver, you know, you're talking about a lot of those guys. They might not be franchise altering. They might not be like franchise cornerstone pieces, but what they are are guys that could potentially be the difference between contending and just being a playoff team. Those are guys who can come in when we're cashing in and can complement those pieces well. So I think those are things that can really help. I don't know what the hell's going on. Fish was like stretching over there. <laughs> oh. God bless okay. you, Fish. Why didn't you compliment Fish by get the hell out of here? Leave. I didn't I didn't compliment You didn't compliment him. Leave. I'm okay. not joking. We're done. <laughs>
Go. All right. Get out. Get out. Good. Well, Bye. Good seeing he you. Get out. Even see you. I'm not finished. Mute his mic. He didn't compliment okay. you. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? I don't know what's happening. Nothing. When Fish what comes up and dressed up as in a tuxedo, if you don't compliment him, you're not allowed to be in here. It's that simple. Anyways, we got to go to break. Do we? What? <laughs> when we get back. That was so aggressive. That's uh, all right. People Apologize will... to him. No. When we get back. <laughs> when we get back. We got more Pistons talk to discuss. And, of course, later on, we'll be taking more Lions callers. But... I got to tell you about Planet Fitness. Sign up today, zero down, $10 a month. Your fitness is essential, both physical and mental health. Guys, I cannot stress it enough. As somebody that goes to the gym, God damn it, does it give me so much relief, especially working with people like Maddie and Sean. It does absolute wonders for me. Check out Planet Fitness, planetfitness.com, or visit one of their many Metro Detroit locations. Six dark corners, a driveway and a patio, five windows that could become doors, Every house has unique security challenges. Guardian Alarm has more tech, more team, and more ways to help keep them all safe. Get a professionally designed and installed security and smart home system from Guardian Alarm. Sign up today and get a free video device. Guardian Alarm. Smart. Right from the start. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. When you need apparel, there's only one place to go. Big Frog in Novi. With no setup fees, no artwork fees, no minimum, and a 24-hour turnaround, you can have your whole team outfitted in no time. Embroidery, direct-to-garment, vinyl, and screen printing, Big Frog has it all in all the styles you want. So whether it's a sports team, fundraiser, school event, or corporate needs, Big Frog is your one-stop destination. Visit bigfrog.com slash novi or call 844-4-BIG-FROG. Make sure you're listening to Woodward Sports all day long. Start your morning with the Morning Woodward Show. Spend middays with Big D Energy. Watch and listen your drive home with the bottom line. And don't forget about Woodward Bets daily. All live. All right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Our friends at Alto Equipment know that when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. That's why Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction. If you've got a big project coming up, Alto Rents has you covered. With the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan, there's nothing your project can throw at you that Alta can't handle. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Alto Equipment, where uptime matters. I'll tell you uh, what matters. Uh, Nothing attitude. that you say. Attitude. Oh. <laughs> and DeAndre Ayton's attitude in that game seven uh, really changed my mind on me even being open to the idea that they would pursue him, even though he's a restricted free agent in the summer. And uh, Stig, I'd like your opinion on this too. Uh, he basically told his coach to kick rocks. He's not going back in the game. Uh, he's like, no, nah, I'm good. Uh, when I saw that, all bets were off the table. It's like not the player. It definitely not in Detroit. Like you're not gonna. Get, you have to be so talented to get away with that. And you, like even as good as he is, you have to be Shaq level good for me to even consider wanting to deal with you with that kind of attitude. Yeah, um, it was pretty disappointing. We don't know what was going on behind the scenes. Apparently there was some rift. And apparently the whole damn Suns team was injured. I don't know if you saw, was it Payne that came out with a quote yesterday? Like, Booker was hurt, uh, hamstring injury, Aiton had a torn thumb, all this stuff. So they were making all the excuses. But yeah, at the end of the day, crunch time, game seven. Shut your ass up. Get out there and compete. Yeah, that's, the one that, that's all you want. Time. You know, as somebody that hates Scottie Pippen, Scottie Pippen in Game Six of the last NBA Finals had not only back. I mean, he had serious back pain, and he would play for five minutes, go to the locker room for five minutes, get it worked on, come back out and play, and he contributed. And he made contributing buckets down the stretch. I don't want to hear these players. My hamstring, my elbow, my nose. Shut the hell up. Shut up. Your job, your job is to do whatever it takes to win a basketball game. Not only for you, not for the fans, for your teammates. And you weren't there for them in game seven. Jeff just made a good point. Everyone is injured in the playoffs. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Literally. I mean, this is, again, Chris Paul suddenly injured after the game seven loss, blowing in another 2-0 series lead. By the way, anybody ever brings up Chris Paul, and Isaiah Thomas, in the same conversation, I have a wooden bat at home. 
and it has your name on it. You still haven't brought mine in. Uh, you've been, you've, you, you know, you're improving. So oh. I went from, you know. So you're sparing me, is what you're saying? <laughs> For now. You're sparing yourself. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, look, I mean, everybody's injured. Uh, that is a very good point by Jeff. You have to tough it out in the playoffs. You know, uh, all, that, all the time. You know what's funny? Growing up, you never heard about injuries, nagging injuries, players posting on social media because it wasn't there. Like, hey, I'm injured. You know, yeah, the, the, there would be information that was leaked. Oh, Scotty's going into this game with a migraine. Oh, MJ has the flu. Oh, MJ this. Oh, Isaiah that. Isaiah Thomas's ankle was the size of this damn TV wall. And he still put up buckets and put on one of the greatest performances ever. I, I, I think he's doing what, just fine. What's crazy is, too, like, you think about how battle-tested these guys were after this past year, right? They went to the NBA Finals. They forced a Game 7. Now you're back in it again. Pretty much the same team. The only thing they changed up was brought JaVel McGee because that was to guard Giannis once you got into the Finals, right? And you think these guys would have each other's backs. It's, you know, kind of bunker mentality. But it just shows that this team grew apart. They didn't gel over another year of better experience. And it was kind of sad to watch. Like, you watch, you watch the dynasty almost get there and then deny itself within a year. You know, uh, it's, so good. it's so good that you're bringing that up because Chris Paul is, let's be real, he's a dog. And he is a fighter. He's a guy that demands excellence day in and day out. And you know what, Stick, we talked about this last year. Who was the leader of this team? Not the best player, even though you could argue last year was probably Chris Paul. The leader, what connected all the dots, was Chris Paul. And then Booker was able to ascend his game and take it to the next level because he had a Chris Paul next to him. You take out Chris Paul and you put in any top 15 point guard in the league, this team's out in the first round. And for me, that's crazy because I'm disappointed in Devin Booker. Like, he should have taken the baton last year going into this year and said, no, 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 my team this year, I'll make sure we get to the NBA Finals. And he didn't do it. Well, you got to give your hat to Dallas for that. I mean, they their game plan, you could see it. Every time Booker touched the ball, they were running a double team at him. And you were wondering why the hell the Suns didn't do that to Luka. I mean, literally, the only player on the Mavs is Luka Doncic. I, I don't care about Brunson. He's an average point guard at best, maybe slightly above average. But you take Luka off that team, that team is trash. You could have triple team Luka, and they didn't do it. But... The Dallas Mavericks did it to Booker and shut his ass out. And the Mavericks give you some hope and optimism for the future, Detroit, right? Luka, Cade Cunningham, right? That's your apex superstar. Cool. Luka has shown if you're good enough, you can get at least to a conference final on your own. Now, Dinwiddie and, you know, uh, Brunson and the way the Mavs Mavericks play and Jason Kidd's been doing a good job there. Yes, it's all a team effort. But notice there's no number two there. There's no number three. There's just a one. And they're in the conference final. Yep. Russell Westbrook couldn't do it by himself. James Harden couldn't do it by himself. Freaking Luka Doncic and Trey Young did it last year. With who? And you got to love the balance in the NBA right love now. It. Just superstars all over the place. It's not no longer super teams. I think that stuff's dead. And it's just nice to have all these. Like, Ja Morant, if he doesn't get hurt, that's a whole different series, too. Yeah, look, I mean, ideally when LeBron leaves the league, this idea that two or three of the ten best players need to team up and to go win a championship. Winning a championship is hard. And if you can find a franchise that is able to build around you, for example, Cleveland, the first go around around LeBron, Let's be honest. Yeah, they didn't do the best job building around him. They drafted poorly. But, but, you know, the whole Miami thing, I don't want to get into it. The point is, I can get used to, Stick, I can get used to not having super teams in the NBA. And I if they're organic, they're organic. 
I like, what am I supposed to do about the Warriors? Well, and it gives everybody a shot, right? I mean, that, that's what makes this fun. That, that's what will make the NBA even bigger than it already is. I think there's more cities excited about their teams, excited about their future. Like Atlanta, they like their team. Philly likes their team. You know, you got Memphis, you got Dallas, you got the Suns. Like, everybody likes their team now. It's not just like, oh, the Heat are going to win. Oh, the Lakers are going to be there. Oh, okay, the Cavs are back in the finals for the 19th time. Probably going to lose. Like, it, it's just fun. There's interest. You know, people always say, well, the Bulls went to six finals in eight years. All right, like, do you not remember how the NBA was? First of all, the Bulls, if you want to call them a super team, that's fine. They just had the greatest player in the era. That helps. That, I mean, he, it wasn't that it was MJ and then it was, like, somebody here. It was MJ. And then all the way under the floor was the next best player. He was just that much better than everybody else. And that was an advantage. And he got to the finals and Stockton Malone didn't matter. It just didn't matter. In the game six where he closed them out for the sixth championship, he had half the team's points. And they only scored like 87. Well, and look what look what Jordan had to go through. Jordan had to go through the bad boys to even get started. And that didn't happen until what, like year five of his career? So, I mean, he had to go through Bird. He had to go through Magic. He had to go through the bad boys. He had to climb a mountain. LeBron didn't have to climb any mountain. Again, you know, like, I, I'm okay with acknowledging LeBron's first uh, NBA championship against uh, the Spurs, that first uh, championship game. Sweet! That, that, was, that was rough. And you could Sweet. tell the difference of not having a basketball team around you, right? But then he goes to my, I don't want, again, you, to, the fact that they went 2-2 two and two in Miami in those four years is... Not one, not two. Just two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just two. Just two. <laughs> oh, man. We got to go to break. When we get back, when we get back, more Lions talk uh, to come. Sticks in. So I actually want to have this conversation with Stick. I brought it up earlier in the show. I do want to discuss the Lions schedule just a little bit. Not so much the games uh, specifically, but the outlook. What Lions fans should be looking for. And we'll do that in a bit. But before we do, Maddie, I got to tell everybody at home about Gypsy Vodka. It's Michigan's vodka. It's gluten free, locally owned and operated up in Petoskey, Michigan. Guys, there's nothing better than supporting local. You know, we're big fans of it here at the Woodward Sports Network. Gypsy Vodka. Check them out at gypsyvodka.com. Follow them on social media. Ask for the bottle by Gypsy. And as always, please do drink responsibly. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. Strawberry Fest is back at Big Boy. We brought back some of the classic breakfast items like the strawberry French toast, hot cakes, and waffle. If you're not feeling breakfast, try our new strawberry bacon chicken wrap, crispy chicken wrap, nacho wrap, or strawberry salad. The perfect recipe for springtime. And don't forget to grab dessert, including our berry delicious strawberry pie for only $1.99 with the purchase of $7.99 or more at participating big boy locations. The only sports network in Detroit that starts with a W. You know, because we win. Woodward Sports, Detroit's winning sports network. Super. Channing is celebrating 20 years of sunshine. Join Big D Energy's Darren McCarty and Neil Rule on May 20th. That's this Friday from 11 to 1 at their Troy location on John R. Road for their 20th anniversary. They're even going to have a grand prize contest to win 20 thousand dollars get your tan on at any of their 26 locations all month join the pepper club for the best deals on unlimited tanning chip chili peppers they've got the hottest bulbs the hottest deals and the darkest tans hottest. chili peppers tan <laughs> i've can you turn my mic on no nobody wants to hear you is my mic on yes your mic is on thank not. god <laughs> i am so excited for big boys next week i am Are too you? yeah they brought food in last week well, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was cool. So but, good. Uh, <laughs> I love that. That's the camera <laughs> shot you're using. <laughs> no, man, last time we did a broadcast there, they were so nice to us. It was such a good time. Um, Stick, earlier in the show, I 
pose the question, should Lions fans reconsider expectations going into the year, given, uh, yes, the schedule's very friendly. And my mindset is simple. I think the floor is seven. I think nine is a solid number. I think anything more than that, I would... I wouldn't be surprised. I would be impressed. That's more of... Uh, I, I would be impressed. I wouldn't be surprised because, one, the schedule, two... I believe the play calling will be much better this year. Where do you stand with Jared Goff and really the step this team can take in year two? Um, I've been on record as saying I want to give Garrett, Jared Goff a full chance. I, I want to see what he can do with all the pieces together because we saw at the end of last season when Dan Campbell was calling the plays, and obviously Ben Johnson's going to be doing that now. When Ragnar was back, when the line was efficient and full when you added Reynolds as a deep threat it changed kind of who Garrett Jared Goff was and it changed how he presented the offense and obviously we were able to be successful the last quarter of the season so that's the Jared Goff I expected all season long I know me and you went back and forth about what he was what he is what he could be I think we both kind of settled on he's a good game manager yeah you know again context like really matters last year when Stafford was traded before the success, before the Super Bowl and division title and everything else, uh, the conversation was, hey, at least this guy has won games. He's won meaningful games, playoff games, divisions. And uh, I think the problem with that was he was walking into a losing situation. And I didn't think he would be successful last year. And now this year, God, I am so happy they traded up for Jameson Williams because I want to evaluate the guy too. Like, do you have anything in you left? Ryan Tannehill went 12-5 and five and won the division and got the number one seed last year with no Derrick Henry for a majority of the year. Like, you can win with good to average. You just can. How? Well, let's face it. The dude's 27 years old. Like, you got to give him a run. It's a little too soon to just throw him out and be like, ah, he ain't good enough. But he but, gives you time. But this is the season where, all right, now it's time to, you know, or get off the pot. Like, if he doesn't prove it within the first half of this season, I think you immediately start. I'm sure they already are evaluating quarterbacks, but you immediately start maybe looking at a trade because, you know, obviously next year is the big cap hit. If we get rid, if we get rid of him this year, it's a bigger cap hit than next year, right? So. We want to evaluate it's him first millions half of, of this dollars. season. It's not, it's not the biggest of difference. It's like three and a half million. But he's uh, still the largest paid player on our payroll. As he should. He, he plays quarterback. And again, it's a contract that we traded to get those two first round picks. Well, so, we had to trade. We had to match contracts too. We were getting course. rid of our yeah, thirty million dollar contract. But you essentially took on that contract. Like the Rams technically could have made the trade and then traded golf somewhere else. Oh, the, for sure. it, it would have made more sense of, for us, obviously, to take him, and that's what gave us the two first round picks. And did I wait? Hello? Two. We have we have two, we have two first round picks next year too. God, and arguably they're going to be better picks, or God, at least the that Rams trade pick will be better. That trade was excellent. Fleeced. Excellent trade. Uh, <laughs> and the Rams are feeling good though too. And both teams win the trade, man. I said that in August the last year. I said there's no way both teams lose this trade. The Lions finally have draft capital with a competent GM, and the Rams are at least going to make a run or an attempt to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but if they didn't win that Super Bowl, oh, ooh, man, the fact we, that they we won the been division. Celebrating. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, man, I, I had a whole month <laughs> of cigars and alcohol. We don't need to get into it. That was that was a great NFL season. It really was. But again, uh, it's very rare, though. You see, te both teams win a trade. It doesn't happen often. Usually one team comes out like, oh, man, wh what do we do? I honestly can't think of another trade that's gone down like this. To that for capacity, both teams. right? Like a franchise quarterback is dealt. Yeah. The, the Texans lost the trade. Yep. They lost. I mean, you're thinking of other big time trades like the Herschel Walker trade back in the day. Did Dallas win that trade? Maybe they won, but uh, I don't think that. Oh Minnesota yeah, they did. They, I mean, they they drafted a dynasty. It was the team that. Yeah. yeah. So, but did Herschel Walker pay off? Oh, no. that's what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. See, the team that traded for him absolutely lost, and it's like <sighs> we when we traded away Roy Williams for like a first and a second. <laughs> like honestly, this is the first trade in my memory that's like, man, both teams are sitting there like. Woo! We got them. Yeah, and you know, Stafford's got three, four years probably left in him. Five years. Depends how long he wants to play. Uh, dude's got time. The Lions are sitting here. Their rebuild is progressively getting better and better, given the draft picks and given the ma the moves that Brad Holmes is making. I, I Again, I don't know any Rams or Lions fan that's, excuse me, that's complaining 
a year after the trade. I just don't see it. That's now, a good the, thing. The Rams are going to complain in like five years once all this catches up with them. Yeah, but you know what's funny? Uh, I, it technically doesn't ever have to catch up because you could do this for 20 years as long as you had a stable head coach and quarterback. You could technically, uh, excuse me, technically give away all those first round picks for the next 10 years. And but eventually swap you're going to run out of them. Uh, well, no, I mean, just every year, every year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Eventually, you're going to be giving away. Eventually, you're going to have to. In 2045, you'll have our first round pick. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I mean, they, they can't do it for that long. But the point is, they know their window. And at least for the Matthew Stafford window, I think they're going to be able to do it with, with ease. They'll be able to flex the books. Would you be comfortable with the Lions if they started mortgaging all their picks like that? Like this year, we got two first round picks coming in the next year. All right, let's trade them and go get a couple all stars. No, nah, I'd hate it. Not yet. Because the quarterback's not there. Yeah. And I don't know if the coach is there. If you told me Dan Campbell's a top 10 coach, and then this team had a franchise up-and-coming quarterback, oh, yeah, I would trade everything away. So you would have been cool with what Denver did this offseason to go get, like, a Russ. Yeah. Yeah. See, I can respect that because you're trying to win. I mean, look, uh, we don't have to talk about Caldwell, but the decision, not my words, the decision was 9-7 and seven wasn't good enough, right? That's what they told the fan base? Dumbest Fine. quote in Lions Fine. history. Fine. They said 9-7 and seven wasn't good enough. So what are my expectations now, Stick? More than 9-7. and seven. Yep. They obviously didn't deliver beyond the point. But I can respect when you make a decision to try and become better. And Denver, what was the conversation with Denver last year, Stick? Oh, they're mad. They just need a quarterback. They well, that's what got the head coach said on the way out. <laughs> he was like, well, <laughs> we'd be all right, but look at the division. My quarterback sucks. Yep. No, they did the right thing. They absolutely did. And Elway's bombed getting a quarterback outside of Peyton Manning. So, Isn't that crazy? Like, John Elway and Jim Harbaugh, both premier quarterbacks. You know, they're supposed to be the gurus, and both of them just cannot nail down a quarterback talent to save their life. It's hard, man. Getting a quarterback is... One of the hardest things to do. There are six teams that passed on Justin Herbert. Washington took Chase Young. Yeah, we were believe me, believe me, they would have liked Justin Herbert. Believe me, the Lions right now would have liked Justin Herbert. Everybody would have liked Justin Herbert right now. <laughs> That's the reality. That's the reality. Oh, man. We're going to go to mailbag in a little bit. If you guys want to call in with your questions, feel free or drop your questions in the chat. The number is 313-552-6322. Adam's getting soft and is going to have the lines in the Super Bowl by August. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Definitely not in the Super Drink Bowl. Drink the Kool-Aid, baby. Hey, I think eight wins gets you the number seven seed in the NFC this year. I just do. I really do. I think eight and nine gets you the number seven seed in the NFC. I think two teams come out of the West. One team comes out of the East, maybe two. Obviously, you have the two other division winners, so now we're at four, five, six teams. Who else? The Saints? No. Who? P Panthers? No. Bears? No. Let's say two come out of the North, like I said. Vikings, Packers. Okay. Well, what about the third? An eight-win team, I think, gets you into the number seven seed. But beyond the point, Maddie, could you tell everybody at home about the great work that the people at the Sports Marketing Agency are doing. Yes, I can. Our friends at SMA help spread awareness about mental health and substance abuse. Their new podcast, This is the F Word, helps spread awareness of fentanyl and other addictions. Go to thesportsma.com if you are struggling or know someone who is and let them know that Woodward Sports sent you. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little chili peppers, man. Thank you to all the fans for making Woodward Sports your number one online destination for Detroit sports. We promise not to drop the ball. 
If you're looking for something fun to do this week, this weekend, you can have my partner, Adam, but you can find your own partner and head on over to the Fulling Warehouse in Hamtramck. That is the home of the original football bowling pin game called Fulling. They've got two ways to play, $12 unlimited open play, or you can reserve a private lane for just $120. Don't forget, of course, they've got a $2 mystery beer machine, as well as multiple full bars. Check it out at thefullingwarehouse.com. All right, we're back here on the morning show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Mailbag time it's will start. It's mailbag time. Maddie, I know you have a question. Taco Tuesday. But we'll get to your question in a little bit. We'll start first with Vinny, Adam, and Maddie. What are your golf handicaps? I don't play with a handicap. I'm a, bo I'm a bogey golfer. If you're a bogey golfer, that's impressive. I am. That's like, that's what? Plus 18 handicap. It's really good. Super. 18 handicaps. Not bad. That's not terrible. That's actually really good for a chick. Okay, thanks. Not bad, man. Huh? I'm not lying at all. I mean, that, that's insane. That's, like, better than some of the dudes I play with. Um, I shoot. Uh, my handicap is, like, between 9 and 11. Depends. I'm pretty consistent. <laughs> pretty consistent. I have no idea how she's as good as me. I just find it funny that yours is between 9 and 11. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Sorry about the reference, guys, but that's just the reality. I mean, there's days where I'll shoot under par, but the problem is there are bad days. When you have bad days, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. But it's all good. Uh, Maddie, you have a question for me. What is it? Yeah. So Tom Brady on Twitter tweeted at LeBron James last night. Said, you and me, five rounds, ice hockey shootout, who wins? Oh, Tom Brady. The hell's LeBron going to do? Bulldoze his way into the, the net? the hell is Tom Brady going to do on I mean, ice He's skates? white. He can probably probably skate. And he okay, probably do we has know better... if any of them even know how to skate? I'm sure Tom Brady's played roller hockey when he was a kid. Uh, but ice was not, oh, hold on. LeBron ice was skating, not playing roller hockey when he was a kid. Ice skating is a different animal. You can't it's just the say, same oh, thing. I promise you it's the same thing. I played roller hockey and ice hockey. It's the <laughs> same thing. The only difference is how you stop. I'm going to ask Darren McCarty from 11 to 1 um, on Big D Energy. Guarantee you, it's tell literally you a the same. Answer. It's the, not. It, it's 100% the same. The only complicated part is skating backwards. Okay, wheels versus a Which blade. is also not complicated at all. I've, I always found skating backwards difficult. All you have to do is wiggle your butt. I figure skated for 10 years. Okay, figure. Uh, we're well, talking about ho hockey. Hockey, okay. not figure skating. Figure skating it's and so hockey easy are, to skate on ice. Figure it's not skating hard. and hockey is more similar than roller that hockey it's, and it's hockey. It's not. Okay. Stick, help me here. Roller skating and ice skating is very similar outside of a few small details. I mean, skating is in both of them. Yeah. <laughs> but you, one stick. of them is Thanks, wheels. Stick. One of them is a sharp, flat blade. Fish, shut the hell up. All right. First I question. I go home. Go home. What home? <laughs> uh, he can't go home. <laughs> Adam, what home games will you be attending for the Detroit Lions this year? I don't know. None of them. It's impossible for me to attend Lions games. We we work on Sundays. Like I'm working all Sunday. Sticks working all Sunday. Stick <laughs> That's the worst part about this, man. We started this because we love sports so much. Now on Sundays, we can't even enjoy the Lions game. <laughs> Why don't you do a pregame live from Ford Field? They and won't let me in Ford Field. In. I, I don't even know if I'm allowed in Ford Field after what I said last year. So. So I'll get the cop to let me in. All right, other questions we have. Wait, can the, you get me the, in too? Because I don't want to pay for a ticket. Okay, cool. I have no idea. Adam, scenario, Lions tank and we get Bryce Young to pair with Jameson Williams. Are you okay with that? I really don't want to see this team win two or three games again. I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Stick? You tanking? For what? Bryce Young? Pair him with Jameson Williams? No. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm, I'm not. I'm not watching another three-win football team. I was ready to punch every single one of you in the face this time. I want to say last October, November. I was losing my mind. My fantasy football team last year was named Lions 0-17. I don't want to. I just. I, I'm. I'm straight on the two-three wins, please. Uh, what else we got here? Da, 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 da. Adam, can we have a dance party if the Tigers win 10 out of the 12 next games? Jack, if the Tigers win 10 of the next 12, I will give away five Detroit Tigers tickets. Oh. Front row. Like, whatever. What? Why are you laughing? I I'm laughing at Fish. Oh. Fish, what the hell are you doing? You're working. He's tweeting. No, I'm Stop doing timestamps. Oh. <laughs> 
God damn you, Steve. No, he's just, actually his, just his response, he goes, just he's looking job. down, and he goes, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Adam, uh, what would you think of, uh, what would you think of uh, if we drafted Will Levis next year? It depends where we take him, because I have this team winning a minimum of seven games. Who knows where that is? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, what's the phone number again, Luke? The phone number is 313-552-6322. Why are the Packers signing bums for $30 million deals? Uh, Fawn Sims, uh, Jer- Jerry Alexander is not a bum. Uh, he's a top three, top five corner in the league. That's a damn good player worth every single penny. And if you haven't learned anything, all the elite NFL teams typically have one a well-paid corner. You take care of the D lineman first. And then you try to find that quote unquote lockdown corner. Denver has it in Patrick Sertan. The Super Bowl champs had it in Jalen Ramsey. Every team has a very good corner. Some look for excellent. When you have that guy in the building, you keep him. Adam, what game or games this year do you think are critical uh, for Detroit, whether Dan is the guy or not? Um, I would say the stretch between Washington and Seattle. You have to beat Washington and Seattle in the first f- four weeks of the year. You can't lose those games. You just can't. You can lose to Minnesota and Philly. I can, I can live with that. You cannot lose those two games. And on top of that, you guys want me to be a real, a real with you? I'll be real. You can't lose to the Cowboys. You can't. You have two weeks to prepare for that football team. A quarterback that has proven he can't carry a football team without a good offensive line and run game. Buddy, buddy, it's at Dallas. They're going to lose. Buddy, I'm sorry. buddy, they're da- at Dallas. I didn't know Dallas. I didn't know Dallas. You know what? Here we go. Watch this, guys. Just give me, give me two seconds. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys something. You ready for this? No. All right. The last ten Dallas Cowboys home playoff games. You ready for this? Loss. You did this fish. Loss, loss. Okay, this is this is a win. regular their season. Their only win, their only win, against Philadelphia and the Detroit Lions. Loss, 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 loss. Win against Minnesota again. Win against Phil. Oh wait, that's in the '90s. We're going way too far back now. We're gonna start from 03. Loss, 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 loss. Win, win, loss, loss. Kiss my ass, home field. They don't have home field advantage in Dallas. Did you half just... the fans in Dallas are from the opposing team anyways. I wouldn't say half, but okay, I'd say a half. large amount. I'm being dramatic here. I'd, I'd agree if you're on a large amount. Fish, they have two weeks. Uh, can you put the schedule back up? They have two weeks to prepare for Dallas. I think Dallas takes a step back. That's a game I'd say, yeah, it's critical. Come off the bye week. You're feeling good. Go win that football game. I would go later on in the year. I think the games, the two games against Chicago, you cannot drop. That is going to be one of the worst teams in football. You have to win both of those games. And I would also say the away game against Carolina. I think Matt Rule's fired by then. See, I think week 12 and 13, though, that's a tricky week because you're going to get up for the Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving. Like that, uh, to me, the Buffalo Bills is a litmus test, right? We're a little over halfway run. through the season. We're going to know what this team is looking like. And if they come out like they did against the Rams, throw everything at them with the kitchen sink. Then they got to get up next week to take on the crappy Jags. That's a tricky trap. It is, but they're home for those. They're home for three straight. I mean, they have some really nice scheduling. They really do. They open up with two home games on the road, home game on the road, bye week on the road, two home games in a row, and then a division opponent on the road. I mean. You know who else has a great schedule? The Woodward Sports Network. Heavyweights drops at 10. Big D Energy at 11, and the bottom line at 2 p.m. I still have 30 seconds. As well as Woodward Beds at 4.30. Tune in for all the shows. We got to go. It's Why are you cutting Tuesday. me? I had 30 seconds. Shut I wasn't up. done. Now it's done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Well, that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs>